line that's trying to activate the time displacement equipment. They know they're going to lose this war. You need to hurry! Everyone, on me! Ah! It's happening! Skynet's starting to send Terminators back! Suppressive fire! The first Terminator just went through! Why didn't we get this movie? This game is awesome. Seriously. I was so mad when I was playing it because like many of you on this channel know, I absolutely hated Terminator Dark Fate. Terminator Resistance is the Terminator movie I've been wanting for years. I must admit that when I first saw the trailer, I got really excited, and then I saw it was made by Taeon Games, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, and published by Reef Entertainment, the same partnership that brought you Rambo the video game. That's a review for another time, but it was enough to make me take a step back and, and cautiously wait for this game. But let me go ahead and say they really hit a home run here. They created one of the best Terminator games I have ever ever played that pays respect to the series and it shows that the creators behind the game have a huge love for terminator lore it feels like that tom cruise mummy movie all over again when that movie came out i thought it sucked and then the game came out and it was amazing before i start the review i do want to make it clear there might be some story spoilers even though it's really nothing you wouldn't expect already if you watched the trailer or know anything about terminator this is a game that fans will get the most out of. It sets out to explain a couple of things and answer questions that I never even thought of. Like how did the weapons in the future get purple lasers? How did John Connor know where Skynet's core was? All that's explained in here. The story fits snugly in the Terminator universe. And I'm so glad they didn't make a game based out of Dark Fate. That stupid Skynet knockoff Legion isn't in here at all. John Connor matters again. This is the classic Terminator future that we see at the beginning of T2. You play as a brand new character called Jacob Rivers, the sole survivor of a resistance unit that was wiped out in Pasadena. I'm usually not a huge fan of inserting made-up characters into previously existing lore. There's very few examples where I've actually liked that, but he does fit right in, and he becomes extremely important to the events of the future. Especially since he's one of the main names on a list of humans that Skynet has marked for termination right along alongside John Connor. Jacob Rivers, marked for termination. The focus of the game's story is trying to survive being hunted down in this apocalyptic future with a group of survivors you meet along the way, so it does have a little bit of a Walking Dead feel to it at the same time, except without zombies of course. And at the same time you're trying to connect with another branch of John Connor's resistance until you meet the man himself and become part of his techcom unit. The story is about what you'd expect out of a Terminator game set in this time period, but there's so many little detailed references thrown in that are basically very brief lines from the movie. In Terminator 1, Kyle Reese mentions his commanding officer, and the future was Perry. So, you're a soldier. Fighting for whom? With the 132nd under Perry. And Perry has a close connection with a character in this game. We also hear in the movies about the final battle against Skynet, and how humanity smashed Skynet's defense grid before shutting down the central core. Why this elaborate scheme with the Terminator? It had no choice. Their defense grid was smashed. We'd won. We get to play through all these events. The entire final battle is this massive epic fight. Skynet's throwing all its forces at you. Explosions everywhere, purple lasers flying by while the Terminator theme is just blasting. And John Connor is yelling on the radio that Skynet started up the time machine and Terminators are starting to get through. It's beyond amazing. And this is why I say that huge Terminator fans are gonna go nuts. You're gonna get the most out of Resistance. While I think non-Terminator fans can find some enjoyment here, it's just not gonna evoke the 
same emotions. The gameplay is what surprised me the most about this game. I thought it was just going to be a basic first person shooter where you just kind of beat each level, get to the end, rinse and repeat till the game's over, but it's closer to something like a Borderlands style game. While nowhere near as deep and detailed as Borderlands is, it does share some gameplay similarities. It's not a true open world, but instead of traditional levels, each section of the game takes you to a large new area you can explore that has objectives to complete and side objectives if you choose to do them, like taking down Skynet Outpost by either blowing them up or hacking them in a mini game that's basically Frogger. And I highly recommend doing the side quest because you also get experience points that level up your character, increasing the amount of items you can carry, increasing your defense, allowing you to craft different items. There's all sorts of upgrades. There's also chips in the game that upgrade weapons, improving aspects like their damage and their fire rate. It took me a moment to understand how this worked at first. It's a little confusing, but it was actually a lot of fun once I did figure it out. It's almost like a matching kind of game. You need to make sure the chips are compatible by arranging them to where the symbols on the left and the right sides match up with the other chips. And in a very Mass Effect way, you can also have conversations with various characters around the Resistance base to get to know their backstories. They've also included romance options that allow you to get naughty with certain characters, which resulted in a hilarious conversation I had with another YouTuber friend of mine, Joe the Alt Gamer. We were talking about who we digitally slept with, and he revealed that you could sleep with multiple ones, and I didn't know that. I was saving myself for the scavenger girl, but once I discovered that you can also take another option as well, of course I reloaded my save and I went for it. I didn't expect any of these game mechanics in the game, and they really make it a much deeper experience. And the enemy variety is nice too. For a Terminator game, they could have easily just had a bunch of standard looking Terminators walking around with a tank boss fight or something thrown in every once in a while. But instead, they actually took some effort to make various enemy types. There's your standard Terminators, flamethrower Terminators, suicidal explosive machines called Silverfish, drones, giant armored walkers, aerial hunter killers, and more. Now let's get into what some may see as flaws in the game. Overall, it is fairly short. I don't mind this so much because it does feel good playing a game that I can beat in two days from beginning to end without having to spend 80 plus hours on it like so many others now. It's important to have brief games like this still. Not everything needs to take forever. I have about 11 hours of footage recorded for this game from beginning to end while doing all the side quests. About as long as an average single player game and I played on the hardest difficulty which is actually pretty easy. There there's not much of a challenge here, especially when you've leveled up and gotten stronger purple weapons by the end of the game. You're almost a Terminator Terminator at that point. As far as replayability, there's not much here, other than going back and making different choices that affect the ending sequences that are very well done, by the way. In a series with multiple timelines, it makes sense to have multiple conclusions to the story. Once I beat the game, I was only missing two achievements that I could have easily gotten had I actually looked at the list when I was playing through. I completely missed them. There's no extra modes, there's no new game plus, so that may turn off some gamers that are looking to purchase this at release. Once you beat it, it's just kind of over. On the technical side of things, I didn't really encounter any game-breaking bugs or anything, annoyances that are so common in new games nowadays. But I do want to mention one thing, uh, the voice acting. Overall, the acting itself is fine, but at times it sounded like the actors were a little too close to the microphone or the gain was turned up too high all of a sudden. It was weird, and multiple times before a character spoke, I can hear very obvious audio pops. Well, look at you, Sergeant. When you helped us in Pasadena the other day, I was trying really hard not to panic because you were only a private. So can I say this game is for everyone? Not if you're expecting a huge, deep experience that'll take you weeks to truly complete. It's just not that kind of game. And non-Terminator fans just won't find the same level of enjoyment that I did. Even with some of its flaws, it's one of my favorite games I played this year, and I want to extend a sincere thank you to the creators of this game for giving us this gem. Taeon Games and Reef Entertainment have jumped up several levels of quality with this release, and I look forward to any future projects they're working on. I absolutely 
love this game as it is, and if you're big into Terminator lore like I am, it's a no-brainer to purchase. If you decide you do want to buy it and check it out, head over to my Amazon link in the description below and pick it up. Helps out the channel and you get the game. If you are in the US, you may have to wait a bit though, the console release isn't out until January 7th. But it is on Steam now, and it's out overseas. Leave me some comments down below, how does this game look to you? What's your favorite Terminator game of all time? And are you planning on picking this game up? Start the conversation. But that's all I have for you today. I will catch you guys later. Since you made it to the end of this video, I assume you enjoyed it. So why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Links in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member. This is Fabian. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.